How are we doing folks? You've all been asking, how do I blur out license plates, registration plates, speedos, faces, that sort of things. So this week, I'll show you how we'll do it. Last week's vid, there's been loads of people that have come on board, joined the clan over on Patreon. Thank you very much to all of you. Your support is gratefully received. Welcome on board. For those of you who've not yet checked it out, check out the Patreon link down below. If it's something you'd like to get on board with, feel free. Thank you very much to all the new subscribers that have come on board the channel. It's going from strength to strength. Can't believe it's gone up over 5,000 in the last couple of months. Just mind blowing folks, it really is. But anyway, enough of that. Let's crack on with the vid. So this really is simple. If you look at the clip, <laughs> you can see right there, we've got a number plate. Say we want to blur out that number plate there. Simple as. If it's just that image there, if it's static image and you want to blur out that bit, then come over here to the effects. Click that, click in all, down to the search, type in, type in CEN, there we are sensor, drag that across on top of your clip, bosh. That gives you this part here, this big old circle. Drag the center of that over what it is that you're trying to blur out. Move the cursor up here till it becomes double arrowed. Shrink it to what size you want. And it's literally that easy. Simple as that, now it's blurred out. Easy. But what if the object you're trying to blur out is moving in the screen? As license plates, dare I say it, speedos, things like that, people's faces, they will move if the camera is moving. So how do you do that? It's keyframe animation. So let's go back to it. So here we are, same clip again. And as we can see here on the initial frame, We've got registration there, which is pretty blurred out, and a registration there, which is pr pretty blurred out. So, let's start with this one here. Same thing, we've got the sensor. Bring that across, drop it right on. So this is currently right at the very start of the clip. You can see there, the time head is right at the very start of the, start of the clip. Pop it there, reduce it down in size. However, now, come across here, where it has sensor, where it says radius, click this little diamond shape there, that's a keyframe. And then also, see where it says center? Click that as well. So what that's doing is that is locking in the radius of that circle and is also locking in those central coordinates right there. So what I'd do now, if you come over to the main clip, I'd hit the right arrow. So the right arrow will advance it through frames. You see, here, if I hit the left arrow, it comes back. So that's us at the very start of the clip. You see the film line there. That shows you that you're at the very start of the clip. And then if I hit the right arrow, once that advances one frame, two frames, three frames. I generally go about three frames. So what you can see now is that obviously the license plate is moved from here to there. So all I do is I just click and drag and bring it across and you'll see that over here this is automatically created a new keyframe for those central coordinates so it does your x coordinate which is a horizontal and your y coordinate which is your vertical but because you clicked center it automatically does x and y at the same time it's not done one for the radius because we haven't altered the uh, size of the the circle there the blood circle if you click drag and do alter it it will automatically add in a keyframe once you do them right at the very start so your first keyframes go in any changes that you make thereafter it automatically adds a keyframe to them so again let's go forward say three or four keyframes so one two three four and we can just click that and drag that down I'd maybe zoom out just a smidgen say 100% so that's zoomed out a little bit more and let's go forward another couple of um, keyframes one two three four well it's gone now so if we just bring that out there you can see that it just went straight out but it comes back in again that number plate comes back in again so if we just go back to the start here hit the right arrow follow it out it's gone it's gone that's it coming back in again we we'll just zoom out a smidgen more let's say 50% if I bring this back roughly to about here so it's just coming back into view put that at 100% so there's a keyframe going in there one two three 
say four, bring that back in, grab the middle, drag it up a bit, one, two, three, four, and again, one, two, three, four, and again, one, two, three, four, let's go back out, one, two, three, four, back in. So we're just walking our way through. This clip was filmed at 30 frames per second, so that's, as it says, there's 30 frames, do I need to explain that? <laughs> You can understand now why this takes me forever when I go and blur out number plates, people's faces, speedos, things like that. It can take hours. Now I generally film at 60 frames per second just because it gives you that slightly smoother, it just gives you slightly smoother footage plus it allows you a bit more scope if you want to slow things down. Do a bit of slow-mo. But anyway, we just walk our way through it and this is the end result. See what you might find here is if say you're jumping forward four frames at a time sometimes you can jump forward more say eight frames but you might find that if there's a sudden movement in the camera four frames can be a lot of movement and so you might need to knock that down to every second frame maybe even every single frame if there is a lot of movement in the shot so for this one here one frame move it across probably go two frames now So it's basically just keyframe animation and that is it. So if we play that back now, so if we play the entire clip back, let's have a look. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see right about here in the actual playback at the bottom there you can see what that number plate is down at the bottom but don't worry about that in the final render when you actually render the film and turn it into your mp4 whatever format it is you're going to go for you won't see that that will go in the render or well, how do you blur two objects in the same clip no problem exactly the same so again back to the start of the clip drag sensor right across and you'll see we've now got two sensors We've got the top one, which is the one we've just done. See how it highlights, puts a circle around it. And then this new one, which is a much bigger one over here. So same thing, just drag it right across to where you want to blur. Size it, bosh, bosh, bosh. Come across here, create a keyframe in the radius, create a keyframe in the centre, job done. And again, let's just move forward, say three frames at a time. One, two, three. Let's move straight across, boom. So I would actually reduce that in size somewhat because it's because the number plate has gone back so it's it's decreased in size in the shot. And again, that automatically creates a keyframe in the radius and a keyframe in the center because we've changed the size of the, the blur and also the coordinates of the blur. So same thing, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, three. Probably go four now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'd always advise that every sort of three or four frames, even if the object that you're blurring out doesn't actually move, just move the blur just slightly so it creates another keyframe. And that'll just give you nice, smooth, transitional movement on the screen rather than just sudden jumps and things like that. One, two, three, four. So you can see this isn't moving much at all, but I am just constantly moving the blurred object just so that it's continually creating these keyframes so that when there is a sudden movement it doesn't just show us one massive leap there is a sort of continuous flowing movement you can see now that this registration has gone right off the screen so just move the blurred object right off work your way through the footage and see if it comes back and I don't think it does, I think that's it done job done, okay so now if we go back to the start Hit space bar for play. <laughs> we can see that one's blurred out and that one's blurred out. Bosh. Simple as that folks. Now there are other ways of doing this. You can bring in Gaussian blurs, you can use plugins, you can do masking for more complex uh, and intricate shapes that you need. But for just simple things like that, for blurring out of speedos, blurring out of faces, blurring out of number plates, license plates, things like that, use the sensor effect. It's really easy, really straightforward, but it can take a little bit of time. That's the only issue. Hope you found that of some use folks, there's going to be lots more vids like this in the How To Moto Vlog series, so keep looking back to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Massive thank you to all the patrons, and thank you very much to all of you who stopped by. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button, hit the like, drop me a comment, let me know what you think. Take it easy and remember, live your life.